November 21st, 2021. When you realize that the very concept of the gender binary is rooted in colonialism and white supremacy and cis heteronormativity, you're able to like strip all those things away. All the rules and regulations of gender and all that crap. When you strip all that away, you're left with people, human beings, sentient creatures, carbon-based life forms. And I'd rather see people just as people than see them as some sick fantasy of what a binary gender system is supposed to look like. I'm reminded that I'm not powerless. I'm a non-binary person living in the United States of America. And though it seems like I'm powerless, I'm actually not powerless. Because daring to live in a world and a society that says that you don't exist, that's power. To live and to be myself and to say, I'm here, you're not going to ignore me. I exist, hello. I think that's powerful. And it took me a long time to start seeing it that way. But there's something really special in daring to live daring to exist, daring to be yourself in a world like this. I've noticed as a black person living in America that I've noticed in the black community that people seem reluctant to adopt new ideas or learn new things. And I'm not entirely sure where that all came from, but maybe it's one of those things where people don't trust stuff that they think comes from white people. Even though the stuff that they are afraid of and therefore hate, well, the thing is that my existence as a non-binary person, as a trans person, as a non-heterosexual person, those aren't concepts made by white people and they shouldn't be dismissed as such because There are people of lots of different ethnicities all over the planet Earth who've had non-binary people who weren't heterosexual, who were trans. We've been here for eons. It's just that when the colonizers came, they started noticing all these non-binary, trans, non-heterosexual people And they decided that they wanted to destroy them because of something they didn't understand. And what people don't understand, they fear. And sometimes when people fear something, they hate it. And sometimes when people hate something, they try to destroy it. This has been a problem with the Moji community for ages. So anyway, back to the black community. I think that's the reason why black folks have trouble with people in the Mojai community. Because they think it does come from white people. Not realizing the history. Because for us black folks, we don't know our ancestors. We can't say their names. We don't know how they lived. We don't know anything about their lives at all. 
Because all that stuff was stripped away from us. So it's like, do I build in my mind an idea of what my ancestors were like? But even if I try to do that, I just can't. Because I can't even fathom what kind of life my ancestors lived. For the slave trade. But I bet it was a lot different than the life that we live now. Maybe my ancestors were like royalty. Maybe the language that they used to speak doesn't exist anymore. Or languages. I don't know. It's just so weird to not know anything about the people who came before you or like your ancestors I know nothing about them and I don't think I ever will because all of that was erased when the slave trade started all of it and how long is there been, I mean how, pff, when did the slave trade start the 1500s it changed the planet earth not the entire planet, because there's still places that are very remote, and no one can get there without ending up arrowed. But colonization and white people trying to take over the world has really changed the world and altered it in ways that I think are kind of gross, to put it lightly. All the gender non-conforming people, you know, their stories have been erased and their, I mean, the gender non-conforming people, like, from African countries and from the Americas before the colonizers, just, all that is just gone. And I feel like there's nothing at all I can do about it. Except create my own culture. <laughs> In 2021, create my own culture. Create my own stories. Write my own history. And make sure that it, this history, at least, gets out there into the world. The world hears it, the world sees it, the world knows it. I'm not saying that I'm important, just <clears throat> so that people know, hey, there's these black non-binary people in the world who lived like this and thought these things back way back in 2021. At least there will be that legacy so future generations can have something to look to. Not like my generation. I have nothing to look to. I look to the ideas of what my ancestors might have been. But I don't really know. So it's like, here I am, blazing a trail, creating my own way of life. And just sort of stumbling around, stumbling around trying to figure it out as I go along my way. Because I don't have any examples. <clears throat> I don't have examples of what a non-binary black person who is a goth <laughs> and listens to Depeche Mode almost daily. I don't have those examples. I don't have any examples of what a black goth non-binary person is supposed to look like. We're not supposed to look like, like examples of other black goth non-binary people who were raised in the 80s by a mother who was a school teacher and were told to speak proper English. Yeah, I just, <clears throat> you don't see a lot of examples of people like me and the media. So again, it's like I'm creating this niche or I don't know, I'm creating just an example of a person like me. 
so there are other people like me they'll see that or they'll hear that and they won't feel so alone like the way I do sometimes I really hope that the things that I put out into the world are actually helpful to someone someday I really hope that Yeah. <sighs>